Hey, what is going on everybody? Fallout here and got a news slash update video for you today covering a couple things, including some important Destiny 2 news as well as the introduction to the new event the Guardian games, and a brand new exotic weapon. We also have a new activity that we can talk about for a little bit, the new Grandmaster Ordeal Nightfall, although I can't talk about that for too long or in too great of detail because I haven't done it yet. Yeah, turns out it probably would have been a good idea for me to maybe plan ahead on assembling a team for when the activity went live. Uh, apparently forgot to do that and haven't played it yet, but as soon as I get my hands in the dough, I will be sure to let you know about the Grandmaster Nightfall. If you want a basic surface level understanding, all you have to know that it's like a nightfall on bath salt. It is really extreme. A lot of people are having a ton of difficulty getting it complete. And if you're hoping that there might be some crazy, wild, gigantic pot of gold at the end of the Grandmaster Nightfall Rainbow, there isn't. There is no unique loot, uh, nothing wildly amazing other than the ability to say that you did it and contribution towards a title. So if you're a title chaser, definitely try to go for the Grandmaster Nightfall at some point, but you have to kind of really prepare. You need to be power level 1025 to even participate. And that is also the ceiling of how high your power can be for that activity. I mean, yeah, you can go into the activity with a power level higher than 1025, but there is a type of contest mode active where if you're above power level 1025, it's not going to do you any extra good. So more on that later in the week, I promise I will put out a guide on that eventually. Meanwhile, you have plenty of time to prepare for the Grandmaster Nightfall. And the reason being is that Bungie has given us now more ways than ever to acquire pinnacle gear. That's right, if you check the patch notes on Destiny 2 update 2.8.1 on Bungie's website, you can go down to the power and progression area of the patch notes to read more, but there's not that much to read, I'll just tell you. The gist of it is, is that four weekly powerful gear sources in the game have now been promoted, kind of, to awarding pinnacle gear, meaning that your ability to hit maximum power level is now going to be easier than it ever was before. The following four activities used to give you powerful gear, now they give you pinnacle gear. First of all, Crucible. By playing four core matches, i.e. either Rumble, Control, Elimination, Survival, or Classic, you can earn one pinnacle engram. Three gambit matches. By playing gambit either three times or gambit prime three times, you will earn one pinnacle. The Vanguard Strikes playlist. As long as you complete three strikes with the correct class element, you will get one pinnacle engram. Finally, we have the weekly clan engram, which is also being upgraded to drop a pinnacle engram. If you're out there and you feel like you are lagging behind in season 10, you haven't really had enough time to grind towards max power, maybe you haven't gone into trials yet because you felt that your power level was insufficient, now you can log on to D2 and you have more ways to acquire pinnacle gear and more easily hit the maximum power level. In addition to old methods getting upgraded, there is one new way to acquire one new pinnacle engram per week, and that is via the Guardian game medals being dunked at the tower, which is an activity I will get into momentarily. All in all, here is every way that you can now get a pinnacle engram in season 10. Four core matches of PvP, three matches of Gambit, three strikes, the weekly clan engram, the weekly master nightmare hunt, the pit of heresy dungeon, the garden of salvation raid, the 100k nightfall, the flawless loot from trials of Osiris, and redeeming your guardian game medals at the tower per week. More ways to hit max power than ever, go get grinding. And with that, let's talk about the new activity, the guardian games. Although now that I think about it, not really sure I should call it an activity. It's more of a PP measuring contest going on in the world of destiny. Kind of fun though. Active starting today, hopefully I get this video done today, April 21st to May 11th, which is three weeks overall. This is a free event to every D2 player, no matter how you play. Again, it's a popularity contest. You are competing among your fellow guardians to prove which class is the best overall. What do you get out of it? Mostly bragging rights. The uh, winner gets a permanent reminder at the tower for the rest of the year in the form of a statue, I think, to show off which class is, quote, 
best in the game. There's actual tangible loot that you can get from it too, but again, mostly just the bragging rights. If you want to participate, go to the tower and talk to Grandma Levante and Zavala. Definitely remember to visit Zavala before picking up anything from Eva, because Zavala actually gives you a free Guardian Games class item, but I effed up and bought one on my own from Eva like an idiot. Okay, practical rewards. The Guardian Games can offer you daily reward packages, a new exotic machine gun, which we will get to a little bit later, and new exotic ghosts, and new class items that will change between bronze, silver, and gold based on which class is currently, quote, winning the Guardian Games popularity contest. I've been told that when the Guardian Games are over, again, May 11th, your class item will lock into whatever color it is, bronze, silver, or gold, for all of 2020, depending on which class wins the Guardian Games. Here's how the event works overall. You pick up and equip your Guardian Games class item, gotta have it equipped at all times to participate, and then you're pretty much doing one of three things. Completing Guardian Game Bounties, completing Guardian Game Medals, or collecting Laurels. Guardian Game Bounties can be acquired from Eva Levante, and they are similar to most other bounties in the game. You got two weeklies, four dailies, and unlimited additional bounties. Nothing too crazy there. They only acquire Glimmer to pick up, so unless you a poor bitch, go pick up as many as you can. Completing Guardian Game Bounties will award you either XP, Glimmer, or Bright Dust, and the medals that you can earn will get you gear and class progression in the overall competition. Completing medals isn't really difficult. They are stored in the quest section of your inventory, and it's the same kind of stuff you would expect from completing a regular bounty. When you're done with the requirements of a medal, you take them to the tower and you dunk them into the Guardian Games podium. Dunking them is kind of how you vote, in the overall class popularity contest, and you can tell which class is in the lead by looking at the height of the flags on the podium. Right now, as of the recording of this video, hunters are in the lead. Raise your hand if you're surprised. Oh look, no friggin' hands went up. Warlocks and Titans, step it up, would ya? Moving on, while bounties are kind of endless because of the ability to repeatedly buy additional ones from Eva, medals are limited to only seven per character, per day, three gold, two silver, and two bronze. Now, even though you would think on paper that you would only want to complete gold medals, no, you kind of want to do as many medals as you can. Again, pick them up, complete them like bounties, dunk them into the podium at the tower, rinse and repeat every day, or until you stop caring, whichever one comes first. The third thing you're gonna be doing that I mentioned is collecting laurels. First things first, what the hell is a laurel? Well, go into a PvE activity and kill an enemy with either a grenade, a fully charged melee ability, or your super. Enemies should drop these little gambit-like triangles on the ground with your class emblem above them. These are laurels, and again, they are only generated by grenade, melee ability, or super kills. You can get them in PvP and Gambit, but I believe you can't pick them up during the game on the floor. That actually happens automatically at the end. But in PvE, you can see and pick these up yourself, and you have to do it kind of quickly or they will disappear and you won't get any credit for them. Just to make sure we're on the same page, as soon as you generate these laurels and they hit the ground, run over and pick them all up, because if you don't, they are going to go away. Here's a little tip to take note of. Picking up laurels of your own class that you are currently playing is plus three, and picking up laurels of another class is plus one. What does that mean? Okay, let's say you're playing a warlock and you generate a warlock laurel by getting a grenade kill. You pick up that laurel off the ground, that is plus three. Let's say you're playing with a friend who is also playing a warlock. They grenade or super or whatever an enemy and they generate a warlock laurel on the ground. You pick that up and because you are a warlock, again, plus three. Let's say on your team though, you're playing with a titan on your fire team and your titan kills an enemy with a melee ability and generates a titan laurel on the ground. You can pick that up but because you're not playing a Titan, it's only going to be plus one. Now that means in theory, if you wanted to optimize your Laurel collecting, you should really only be doing activities in fire teams where your teammates are the exact 
same class as you. That way, every laurel that you pick up, no matter who generated it, is going to give you plus three. Other tips for laurel farming. You want to try to use your gun as little as possible and focus on killing enemies with grenades, melees, and supers. Duh. For supers, any roaming super that's going to guarantee a lot of trash killing and lasts for a long time. For example, top tree storm trance for the warlock. I know not everyone out there plays warlock, Shame, but you get what I'm saying. For melees, you could run a high strength build and pair it with class trees that naturally get you your melee back quicker. Example, hunters can probably rely on bottom tree gunslinger for the big heavy FU throwing knife, which can auto replenish. Titans out there, God love them, can probably lean pretty heavily on the insurmountable skull fort exotic helmet and swing away. Warlocks going the grenade route can probably roll deep with middle tree Nova paired with the controverse hold gauntlets. If you really have to use a weapon, there are some weapons that you can use to replenish your nade energy, i.e. any you might have with the Demolitionist perk, that should help out plenty too. Obviously, there are many more options out there to get kills primarily with melee, grenade energy, and super energy, just throwing out some ideas that immediately come to mind. So aside from the popularity contest, the Guardian Games gives you an opportunity to earn the new exotic power weapon, the Air Apparent. This is essentially a Guardian version of the Cabal minigun, previously referred to by me as the Skyburner's Girth. I'm still gonna call it that, but the official Official name again, Heir Apparent. How do you get the Heir Apparent? Good question. You have to complete the Triumph Class Act, which requires you to complete any seven Guardian Game Triumphs. There are only 12 Guardian Game Triumphs total, and with one of them being Class Act, and the other, Star Athlete, which requires you to have completed all other 11 Triumphs, we really only have 10 Triumphs we can pick from if we're gonna grind for the air apparent. Each of those 10 triumphs basically requires you to just play the game. They range from collecting laurels anywhere to collecting laurels from particular activities like gambit strikes, forges, and destinations, to redeeming medals, to completing guardian game bounties, you get the idea. These are all activities you're likely going to be doing anyway during the Guardian games. So as long as you actually play, you should end up getting the air apparent. One triumph which seems oddly out of place is Embrace the Light, which requires you to beat enemy guardians with your super in Rumble. Depending on how much PvP you play, that could be a fairly easy triumph to cross off your list of seven if you have a high intellect build and a class with a good roaming super that one should be a piece of cake. If you want to be optimal in acquiring the air apparent, probably start with the Great Deeds Triumph, which wants you to gather laurels in particular activities. Especially because you can now get pinnacles by both playing strikes and playing gambit, you should want to tackle that first anyway. If I find out a really good way to both farm laurels or farm any of these triumphs in a really quick manner, I will come back and let you know, but for right now, it's just play the game. And that's pretty much it. There is way more info in the Bungie patch notes I could have gone over. I felt like the pinnacle information was probably the most important, so no need for me to go through the entire thing. So if you care, go out there, play a little Guardian games, if not for the bragging rights, at least for a new exotic power weapon. As soon as I have the gun, I will try to do a review on it, and I will try to get a review out on the Grandmaster Nightfall as soon as I get my hands in it. If you found the video helpful, do the usual crap. Do the sub button, do the notification bell, click the like button, leave a comment down below, uh, give me your soul, give me your firstborn child, all the usual stuff. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.